Good morning, all, everybody. Um, Martin and I think it's Nicholas. Um, and Marcus. Marcus. Um, they're going to talk about uh, triple bypass, um, the open mark surgery. So that should be inspiring. Thank you. Um, I actually crossed the, the subtitle, it's getting very heavy on the puns. Um, so thank you for having, having us. Um, there's three of us. Um, my name is Martin Malten. I'm head of software development at the Libus uh, department at the Royal Library of Sweden. Uh, we have Marcus, who is tech lead of this project, and we have Nicholas over there, who you've, you've seen before. Um, sorry, I should get my presenter notes as well. Libris is the, um, not to be confused with Ex Libris, or I learned yesterday, Libis, which is um, a, a Belgian company, I think, which has basically the same logo as us, but without the R. Um, Libris is, is the, the, uh, the library infrastructure in Sweden, or the national library infra infrastructure uh, for the university libraries and some public libraries. Um, we've been around for 40 years, or 41 years um, this year. It's, it's, it's run by the, uh, by the national library. Um, we provide cataloging infrastructure for, um, for the university libraries. We have a central catalog. Uh, which means that we don't have the problem with, with uh, uh, unique identifiers, which I heard about um, before uh, f from the Germans, for example. Um, we have a central catalog, we have unique identifiers. It may, you know, posi positions us very well to do linked data, for example. Um, so we've had linked data in, in Libra since 2008. Um, and I guess you could describe it a, a bit like this. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice flower. And th this is, um, I mean, many linked data projects are like this. Um, there's, there's one problem, though. Um, they're essentially uh, growing on the back of this zombie called Mark. Um, and uh, many of the projects are like that. It's, it's easy to do a research project or a new project where you implement linked data and you use RDF. Um, if you want to actually um, um, replace existing functionality with, uh, with this, um, it's harder. Because it turns out Mark is, is you know, he's been declared dead f quite a few times, I think. Um, Probably the last five ELAGs, someone has said Mark is dead, and it turns out that Mark is very much undead, rather uh, than dead. Uh, he's still around, and and a huge amount of the of the uh, library infrastructure actually uses Mark. So, I mean, we send files to each other um, using Mark. Um, it's very much a Mark-based uh, infrastructure. So. Still, we felt that this was perhaps not good enough um, because we had fairly new um, challenges um, for sort of central uh, infrastructure in, in Sweden. For example, flexibility. Um, we'd like to um, integrate our um, um, integrate our system with local processes, for example, for digitization. Um, and it's really becoming a mess where we're building circles and circles around our current system, trying to provide different services like linked data, like write APIs, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Um, so we wanted to build something completely new. Um, so we're actually um, we're actually building a new um, a new catalog for for uh, Libris, the, the central infrastructure uh, in Sweden, with a new cataloging client, and we're building this on linked data, sort of from the bottom up. Um, it's much harder than than tr just I'm just going to say just about it, than, than publishing data, um, because there, there's a lot of things to to think about. There's a lot of uh, new um, challenges with this. We have, for example, should we build a national discovery layer? Should we uh, 
we need to get rid of the old workflow. Digitization, like I, like I mentioned. Um, there's also the, the thing of, you know, if we remove Mark, we probably want to replace it with something that, or build a new catalog. We want to be, be able to um, make a transition faster than this one, because this one takes, has taken a long time. Like I said, it's been, Mark's been declared dead for, for um, you know, probably he was declared dead in the 60s, I'm, I'm guessing, by someone, by some hippie. Um, so, and the libraries also, they do lots of things. Like the, for example, uh, Anders mentioned they're starting uh, Stockholm University Press. They want to um, store objects, not just metadata. Um, this could be something useful to have uh, on a national infrastructure level. Um, so we decided we should do this the linked data way. Um, and the interesting, interesting thing here is that um, once you start using this, and not just publishing it, you actually start consuming linked data. Um, th there's a very profound change in how you do systems design. Um, when you actually start consuming linked data, um, you realize that hmm, the connection to my local data and to external data is basically the same. Th there's, no, there's, no, there's no difference, really. Or you, you, at least you can uh, design your system so that um, internal data or changes in internal data um, is handled the same way as changes in external data. Um, this, we do need something. We, we need, oh, that doesn't really show, but it's, we do need ways of realizing that something has happened when we deal with, with external data sets. But that's basically the same thing that we have global headings change for. Uh, it's just another way, and, and that only work internally. Um, of course, if you work with someone else's data, you need to realize that something has changed and, and react to it. I'm not talking about aggregating data. I'm talking about uh, reacting to a change in someone else's data. Um, that's cool. Um, and we also want to be a, a sort of a, a better web citizen. Uh, and I, I, I know this is sort of a duh thing. Um, you all know the web is distributed. Um, but it actually means, I mean, the, it does actually mean something. It means, for example, that like uh, Rurik said yesterday, discovery is not a web. And an aggregate is not a web either. Um, a cloud is not a web either. Um, distribution it, is the thing. If we have like three or four big aggregates of metadata or clouds, that's not a web. That's basically the, the four semantic balls of yarn. It's not the semantic web. Um, we would like this to be more distributed and we would like to be able to use distributed data. Um, I guess the, 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 the easy example is that why should I make an authority record for a German author? Why is that not made by the German library so I can use that one? Um, oops. And so basically this change is, is meant to, to facilitate, to go from a situation where we have um, mark on the inside and publish linked data, um, but all of our workflows are mark-based or are, are sort of traditional ILS uh, system-based, to a situation where we have linked data at the core of the system and um, perhaps produce or, or, or can show uh, mark, you know, because we would need to coexist with mark infrastructure for quite a few years, unfortunately. Um, but we can keep it on the outside of the system instead of having it sort of in the middle, in the middle of the infrastructure. We have linked data in the middle and then we exchange Mark instead. And now I, it's time for Marcus. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the system design for uh, the new uh, cataloging system. And um, uh, it's worth n mentioning that um, we're actually working on this as two projects as one. Uh, we have uh, the union catalog, we're building a new web cataloging um, 
application for that. Uh, but we also are replacing our entire backend, um, which means that uh, we need to be able to handle all kinds of, of data. Like Martin mentioned, we, we might want to store digital objects. Uh, we need to handle uh, uh, metadata of other formats than, uh, than uh, Mark, or as Niklas will tell you in a few minutes, uh, the, the converted Mark into JSON-LD. But at the center of the um, system, we have a, a piece of software which we call, uh, which we call the Welk. Um, and uh, a Welk is uh, basically a, a gatekeeper to handle data. Uh, as soon as data is inserted into the system, the Welk takes care of it and makes sure that it's handled properly. And uh, the first thing that happens is the data is stored into a storage component. Um, and this is uh, to enable the, the, the system to be format agnostic in that we can take any kind of, of data that's thrown at it, be it uh, an XML document, a PDF, an, uh, an image file, or even a JSON-LD document. And we store that into uh, a storage component. Uh, and here we are building the system around uh, um, a pluggable infrastructure, which means that we can uh, use any type of, of storage we, we want to. We could uh, develop this as, an, as a SQL database. Uh, at the moment, we're using Cassandra. Um, we have tried a disk-based approach where we just store files on disk. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Um, the, this, the system uh, will work with any component that's, that meets the interface. Secondly, we uh, analyze this uh, piece of data that we've thrown into, uh, and we try to extract triples from this. And here we use plugins into the system um, so that we, when, we, we'll, when we learn more about the format, we can uh, uh, devise better ways to extract nicer triples uh, from this data. And that means we don't need to fully understand the format before we can store it into the system. We can always improve on the data that we have already stored, uh, which is um, handy when we want to handle large amounts of data and we don't know exactly how to to uh, uh, how to extract triples from it. And we also have an, uh, an indexing component. And uh, here we're using Elasticsearch at the moment. We could use Solar or something else if we wanted to. Uh, and that is to, to enable uh, full text searching, faceting, and, and so on. Um, and um, as I said, it's a, it's a <coughs> pluggable architecture. And uh, the, the works are designed so that you can uh, attach different plugins to them, uh, for instance, format converters, um, different APIs for different systems. Uh, as is, this is the backend system which is meant to handle data for a larger, uh, more systems than just a catalog, a uh, union catalog. Um, we um, want to make sure that the APIs that we are writing for this is useful for, for people. We will be making all the APIs for Ibris Excel uh, available to the public, uh, probably we use for, for API keys and so on. But uh, the idea is that anyone should be able to, to build applications on the same data that we have uh, and uh, using the same APIs. And that's why we're, we're, you, we're eating our own dog food here when we're developing the, the uh, web cataloging application. So we're using the same APIs that we are later going to make uh, public. And speaking of public, uh, all of this is available as open source. We're developing this um, in our underwear, as I like to say. Um, so all the bugs, uh, uh, all the badly written code, uh, and also uh, all the functionality is available on GitHub. Uh, for this is the, the backend system, Libris Excel. If you change out the Libris Excel and uh, enter uh, kit in uh, there, you will have the, the front-end application. And uh, with that, I think Niklas will talk a little bit more about the um, uh, conversion from Mark to proper data. 
from questions to knowledge. Uh, yes, because as this beautiful saying goes, when you're up to your neck in alligators, it's hard to remember that the original aim was to drain the swamp. I feel this quite often when I'm knee deep in Mark. Uh, because, well, I think that the major problem with Mark is that although there it is a notation which records immense amounts of observations, very minute details, uh, very rich and varied details, it is very often hard to see what it is that's been observed. So stumbling around there, I come across titles, and suddenly the titles have dates. So, oh, that's not a title, right. And uh, of course, there is documentation, and there are experts. We have uh, Christel Larsen at the National Library of Sweden, and there are, well, there is an entire profession in this. But they as well know that, OK, this, this isn't really feasible. It's entangled. You have to know lots of things. Uh, th there are beautiful fields like the 260 field, which is it's two or more entities within it, and they are probably events, and things like that. So it's hard to keep track of the mission, uh, which is about actually dis discovering the subjects of this information, the entities and uh, being able to digest that into simple forms, being able to navigate between them, and then link these two entities on the web that are enhancing these descriptions or connecting them in other ways. Uh, just to emphasize the point, uh, if you have a forgotten somehow how Mark looks, I, I don't know what this is, really. If you look at, if you take substring of the first field, number six and seven, you start to get a grip of what it is. If you look it up in the table, and then you might be able to discern how to interpret the, the alignment. If it's a serial, which it isn't, there would be a conglomeration of events, but now it's a book. Uh, what, what we want as instruments to be able to do this, as we've mentioned before, is simple tools to be able to quickly make something of this, interpret this, understand this, build services on it, test them on the users, build the input interfaces upon uh, an, a subject or entity-oriented approach. And for that, we right now use JSON-LD as a structure, which is very usable because we can throw the JSON into Elasticsearch, getting a faceted search and free text search and things like that. And uh, to build a client for cataloging, we can use modern web frameworks such as AngularJS, which uh, makes use of JSON inherently. So things are fairly, I wouldn't say easy all the time, but direct with this approach. Uh, but to be able to get rid of the gators and find our way through this swamp, we need a map. Uh, the approach here, or the principle, is that this knowledge about what things mean has to be recorded somewhere. And uh, I do not want to record this in something Turing complete, because I don't want people to understand all of programming before being able to get a grasp of this. So we're trying, it's easier said than done, but we're trying to find some notation which says what should be done to lift up the details and discern the subjects and sometimes split it up into several entities, classify them such as events uh, and so on. And uh, then the flowers start to blossom out of the back of the zombie mark. So at least we start to realize directly what the thing that we're looking at is. And we can even begin discussing if we want something more than a manifestation level, because we're not even close to being certain of what is the expression level and things like that. So we're working very much from the bottom up here. And uh, the most important thing I is 
to be able to realize what is not the actual manifestation. And as 260 is a field, you have to interpret that and realize that, okay, th this is this is not a publisher, it's an event of a publishing, and the, the recorded name is not the current name of the publisher, but the name at the time, and so on. So all these minute details, these gators around my neck try to pull me away from the objective. But we're getting further ahead through the swamp, and uh, we are actually being able to find stable ground uh, to map these types to common voca vocabularies, which is the crucial part in being able of being on the web. And if you saw my lightning talk, you know that this is a JSON-LD context, and uh, I have declared BibFrame right now as the primary vocabulary, as that's also under development. Everything is a moving target right now, but we are discussing these things together, and that's the essential means to be able to understand each other so that we can walk on the paths from our respective systems through links between these items instead of just looking at the mark and not being able to find the subjects. And again, this is RDF in title notation from the JSON. So what we're producing is directly interpreted as JSON and storable in Sparkle endpoints and so on and so forth. And now, obviously, I'm not Anna Berglund. She, she's, she's the project lead, and she's over there. So if you want to ask her something, you should talk to her. I just want to show you that it actually exists. Um, this is the uh, um, the catalog, the, 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 uh, the interface uh, facing the, the cataloger. Um, of course, when you're building something on, on linked data, it, you know, it, it has more to do with choosing entities rather than describing things with strings um, this is this is not a demo but it's th this is what it looks like right now um, in this case um, I want to add Sam Keith because he's the illustrator of, of this um, Sandman by Neil Gaiman um, again of course you're, you're you're choosing entities rather than than like I said writing strings um, we have um, well, it's in Swedish, so it's it's. But as you can see, you can. I mean, th th this is the interface that will that will face the user. Um, I didn't mention this before, but we have we do have um, sort of pressure on us to to be able to uh, work with multiple formats and to extend this interface for for multiple cataloging situations. Um, so we've made it very modular so that you can um, you can sort of make it work for for any. Uh, for your specific situation. This is the generic just interface to it. Um, and these are the holdings, because it's, it, you know, it's, it's a union catalog, so we have the holdings for the libraries as well. Um, that was basically it. I just wanted to show you that it actually exists. I mean, this is a screenshot, so I could be. But you can see the URL up there. And the, the, the URL actually works. Uh, we're working very transparently with this. So uh, please go and, uh, and find bugs probably right now, because th there's a couple of months left until we actually reach production. Um, that is the end of our talk, um, so thank you. Thank you very much.